Welcome to the August 30th edition of the Locked On Lease podcast. David Morissuti here. No Mike DeStefano this week as he is on vacation. So I did bring some help with me for this week. We're going to discuss his work on the Leafs beat, some of the storylines that he is watching when it comes to the next few weeks for the Leafs, plus how last season ended and how the Leafs kind of worked around that going into the offseason. We get his thoughts on that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs, right on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Le- Locked on Leafs podcast, your daily fix for all things Leafs. I'm your host, David Morrissey from Sportsnet. And as I mentioned, Mike decided to ditch me and he's probably having a pina colada somewhere in the Caribbean. But I have a reinforcement today. A friend of the show guesting with me is uh, David Alter, who runs Inside the Maple Leafs for Sports Illustrated. As you know, Locked on Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. And you can now catch us on video on YouTube, so make sure you follow us and subscribe, Locked on Leaves. Very excited for today's show because I've wanted to have David on for a long time because I don't even think we've had a true Leafs reporter on the show, and it's tough to get you guys during the season because, let's face it, you guys are running everywhere. I know, David, you travel quite a bit when you cover the team, and that's part of the reason why I like what you do because you are not just the guy who stays in Toronto. You try to follow this team wherever they go. So I'm actually really excited that you are joining us. Yeah. In fact, I was the only one who was at all games and playoffs in a year with COVID in a year with a lot of restrictions. Would I did not get sick. Uh, uh, a lot of my colleagues did get sick. Um, it was not quite the same uh, in terms of Company restrictions and stuff I had the liberty to be able to do all the games if I wanted to. And there, I don't think you get present at all the games. So uh, uh, that was the first time I actually made it to all. Uh, I think I did a, a whole season once before, but it was a lockout short in 2013. So yeah, it was uh, quite the grind, especially with the limited travels options. Of, uh, but but it was, uh, it, it was awesome. Uh, I won't trade for anything, despite it was pretty awesome to actually pull it off. It, it must have been so difficult, like, as you mentioned, like, to go through all that during a time where traveling was such a hassle. Going through all the COVID restrictions, you probably had to do a million different COVID tests, all, make sure all your vaccinations were up to date. And then also trying to cover a team that, you know, Every 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 like second, people are looking for information on this team, and uh, you are always a great source for that, and I commend you for that. But that that truly must have been a totally different grind from anything you've ever done in your career. Yeah, it was. I mean, I did I did a large portion of the twenty in Canada too. So for every game in Montreal and Ottawa, for safety reasons, it was a draw all the time, and because those were shorter commutes, it was. Was a bit of a pain because sometimes not the whole stretch of games like they were supposed to. Uh, I remember like my sitting in a car too long by the end of the season. Uh, there was that. Um, also flying to Vancouver, double triple mass with nobody on a plane. Interesting. Um, but yeah, it was really tough. There was one time Rob Lett, who who was maybe. Uh, video camera operator. He's one of the few staffers that did not travel with the team. But there was one situation where the Leafs had back to back in Minnesota and Winnipeg. Uh, the flight option was not possible to get to both games because, like, eight o'clock when the game's already an hour old. And then the only other connection option was way out to Chicago and Montreal. And then when I looked back on that one, I would have missed him anyway, had I actually tried that. So, 
I remember me and Rob did like through North Dakota uh, to get to Winnipeg in time for the game for that, that one game on back to back, which normally there there would be in normal times would be three or four options between those two, and for, for that not to be a thing, and how we're we're gonna figure that out. That was the real touch and go is able to make it kind of situation. So uh, we did got got to, uh, got to everything, but yeah, it was certainly a challenge with limited options, uh, particularly limited to the U S mm-hmm. in that situation when Winnipeg isn't one of those major hubs throughout the United States. It wasn't as much of an issue and then tra- travel within Canada too. But if, if you had to go international and it wasn't, into one of Toronto, Calgary, Montreal, or Vancouver, it was fried. I, I can only imagine too. I mean, and and you were also, you know, working for different outlets at the time, if I'm not mistaken. You started, I think, yeah. with the Hockey News, then you moved over to the Leafs Nation. Like that, that must have been just something totally different. But now you're on to like a whole new venture uh, with Sports Illustrated. And maybe talk a little bit about, you know, the yeah. site you're running and how this is. It, for to me, it must be a totally different sort of uh, realm that you're going to here. It is an angle with the hockey news. When I joined the hockey news in January of 2021, I had been away from the beat, um, and um, the idea of how to run is actually how I'm getting to run the Sports Illustrated one because the Sports Illustrated. It did have some sort of content share. If you look back on links that I shared there, content used to be at SI.com, like as the URLs. And so it was supposed to be in a certain way where there were going to be team sites for all 32. But anyway, and once it was looking like it was not going to be in the way it was manifested, it was just kind of looking for a new home uh, to kind of get, get through the season. And the Nation Network help that they welcomed me with open arms i'd always loved what they did from an seo's content engagement standpoint you know there's a stigma that bloggers get but um there's some there and a lot of the other sites and um i really learned a lot during my time. It allowed me to continue to do the job the way i wanted to do and i would have stuck around there but back around where it was a chance to kind of run the site I've never really been a boss of a site before. Publisher in that regard was just too good to pass up. So uh, it, it allows me to kind of build it up the way I want to build it up. Hopefully after one full season on a staff and and continue to build it up that way. The first month generated a lot of traffic, which I was very overwhelmed by because you just never know when you put yourself out and so far has and it was just an off season so i'm really really excited um to do the plan is to go to all all the regular season games and playoffs again this year Um, it will be an easier endeavor than it was last season it might be a more expensive endeavor but it's something that we're willing to do and so because this is kind of how i wanted to do it back in January of 2021 with the hockey news and it didn't quite work out. I was really thankful to someone like a Graham Rooston who did give was away from the beat for a long period of time uh, to kind of get back out there. So for him, I'm indebted. Uh, this is this with uh, with Sports Illustrated is it's how I've always wanted to do a long period of time. Um, I have a stake in it. I don't have to worry about uh, appeasing anybody or any other entity they allow me to do it to be a success and the numbers have proven that so far so i'm really excited yeah we always know that the i mean even for us when we kind of first started we knew that there was a big potential with the lease market because even though there's always so much there's never not enough when it comes to like the lease. When you look at how other big markets, you look at, you know, New York, Los Angeles, all those like big sports markets, people, it's not just, you know, they always say, oh, the competition makes it tough. Like, no, the competition means that there's, there's a craving for more diverse 
voices, more diverse things. So um, what what are you hoping to do a little bit differently, maybe with your coverage to kind of stand out uh, from what you're what others might be doing? Yeah, so uh, things I'm hoping to do, which will be a secondary thing is to open up newsletter in addition to sports illustrated so it'll be a little bit separate the element there will be one of the things that people don't don't do especially people like me in access is um allow subscribers to actually content decisions so knowing i'm just a team of one i want to help crowd ideas so so the newsletter will kind of the the written part of the new about the stories about being on the road for all the games and the logistics and and what it's down and booking stuff and you know just general stuff that allows people to be part of the experience With that those people get to have access to a discord different channels that they can either pitch story ideas um can dialogue with me during more morning skates and practice where all the big news stuff happens and they they're part of the reporting experience without being there and and like i i feel that there is an element to that with with a lot of the reporters kind of averaging up in terms of age myself um but to actually have the access on the ground where people can dialogue with someone that's there about what, what's happening but also can answer questions and be able to actually part of the reporting experience that that's what younger people want that they're not getting the information about what's going on to them they actually want to feel like they're part of it as well and that's corporate with that that in turn will will also have an effect with sports, sports illustrated as well yeah and i mean we have a discourse channel here at the at locked on lease and we we found that you know it does help us we're, we're always trying, you know, having to figure out what exactly our listeners want us to talk about. Obviously, we look at our comment section on YouTube, but the discourse is great because it's, a, it's an intimate group and everyone's kind of, you know, throwing out their thoughts and all these things. It just makes a, it, it makes it easier because it's like it's coming right from the viewers, right? We're not trying to perpetuate it from, you know, a mainstream media sort of idea. This is exactly what our viewers want and it makes it so much easier. So I'm, I'm actually, it's actually nice to hear that you're looking to do that. Cause I think, uh, I think sometimes fans get a little tired of hearing the same old narrative when it comes to the, what comes to the Leafs especially. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great idea to always have it. I mean, when it's also through fan nation, <laughs> I think it kind of helps to know that the fans will exact, will have the input that maybe they don't usually get. <laughs> And for for me, it's just a more it's just more of a matter of, of look. I'm I want want to know what people want to know about. Like I I remember I've gone to job interviews, with story ideas. He's like, "What would you write about the Leafs if you were writing today?" I'm like, "Well, listen, I have my ideas. Tell you what they want to know about in the fans. And if you give them that platform to where they can, you know, ask you about certain things." With times it can get a little nutty, but but if they have legitimate questions that are not usually, you know, I I I hate to bring up wrestling, but I love how certain wrestling journalists know that they're a one on one or something, and they really put it out there. What do you guys want me to ask about this? You know, things feel like you know it's just you, and that's it, and then you're just going to tell them what they actually get to feel like they're part of the process. That's what's kind of missing. Most looking forward to in terms of incorporating that that element, and so will be the subscriber version of that, where they can actually be part of being with me. When, and then, and the newsletter will be, you know, the fun part about it, like how I'm booking travel, doing this job, like super niche, and. That, and, and the numbers show that, like, if you're going to have this, that'd be very, very super niche because anyone can go to anything else about anything. But if you're providing about a very specific thing, uh, you'll, you'll tend to get people who will kind of want to. 
Yeah, that no, for sure. I think it's uh, it's something that's sorely missed, especially with a lot of uh, sports right now and trying to get back through, you know, from the COVID stage where everyone, it seems like everyone used to travel. And now it's almost like how, how can we kind of do it without putting in maybe the same, I wouldn't say same effort, but the investment isn't the same as it used to be. Yeah, and look, I'm on my own, right? But I mean, the deal is structured and, and other deals I have that are coming are to have the wherewithal to do it. And it's the ultimate bet on myself that that people do come to appreciate the people more so than the coming to put the money in to make sure that you're present and getting everything covered. The mission of all of this. Yeah, that's 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 definitely an important uh, thing when you think about coverage nowadays. Um, we're going to take a quick break because I do want to get David's thoughts on kind of where last season, you know, his thoughts on how last season ended. I mean, we all know how it all ended, but just to get his thoughts from somebody who is inside, has the inside scoops, and also a bit about how it impacted how the Leafs did their offseason. So we'll do that first. But before we do, we're going to hear from one of our show sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by the NHTSA. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think for, of calling for a ride. Ah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, kill someone. Everyone knows the risk about driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired driver on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. We'd like to welcome you back to the Locked on Lease podcast. David Morissetti here with uh, a guest of the show. Uh, hopefully we'll get him on more so during the season when he's available. And that's David Alter. He is a Leafs reporter. And he's also running the Inside the Maple Leafs for Sports Illustrated. And we all know how... It, unfortunately for Leafs fans, it was kind of the same old story. Another game seven, another loss in the playoffs. But did this feel any different from any previous years covering the team? We know how it ended with Montreal. We know how it ended with Columbus. Was Tampa any different for you or is it just, you know, the same old story with this team? In a vacuum, it was different. I mean, initially, Actually, it may not have felt maybe the emotion of it. And of course, game seven, you know, everyone's kind of looking at all, all that, but it was different. Uh, I, I do acknowledge that, that, but I also acknowledge the fact that you given the personnel, the staff, the promises from the previous year, uh, uh, all that stuff, the, the officiating was bad. Yeah, Austin Matthews came a post away from ending it. There's all that stuff. But when push comes to shove, they did not, not get the job done. And that matters. Despite conspiracy theories and how angry fans were kind of defending, the results are the results. And, and the job did not, not get done. And, you know, I, I understand the pressure that comes in Toronto. My own bad takeaway from everything was when things wrapped up at the end of the season. Outraged enough about about what happened. They they kind of seemed, if if that makes any sense, like they weren't like, oh, well, th this is unexpected. Like, when what happened in Montreal, they were just kind of like, eh, you know, like we we played good, and I don't know. I mean, and there were no there were team. I, I wasn't expecting it to happen after franchise record amount of wins and. Points. I feel like I don't know. It's I know. I know I'm I'm answering your question 
and I'm answering a different question you were probably going to ask me, you, but I feel like the regular season, there needs to be maybe some more adversity where maybe all year in order to have something kind of something get jarred loose. Or I just didn't see enough contrition and is the wrong emotion and it's not productive, but it just, just seemed like they were just kind of like, well, what can you do? We went lost. And to me, I don't know if that's enough. And with everything else that was done, this team forward, uh, especially with the division looking like it got a lot better this year. I look at you know, games where they lose to like Buffalo and they just look absolutely dreadful. I look at those games and they seemed, you know, the panic wasn't there to lose a team to Buffalo like that to, you know, it, it seemed like that mentality allowed it to be kind of okay for what happened down the road. And maybe, maybe that's something that needs to change. Is that, you know, on the players, is that on the coaching staff? Is that on Kyle Dubas? Like, where do you fall in terms of how players and the team kind of holds themselves accountable? Yeah, I'll add one further to that. I remember uh, Bob McKenzie was on TSN Morning, and I can play the audio, and I'm. it's not my report, because obviously he, he um, but he actually mentioned on the segment that that may be the Leafs leader group about those very issues against the Buffalo and before the talks could go really deep and really too deep into it you know they the players kind of pushed back on that and said worry about these when it comes time to time to get the job done we'll deliver or what happened and like yeah there the excuses were there but that's one of the things I point in terms of, okay, well, is that on management? Not players down and, and being like, uh, yeah, like those, those things where, yeah, I just, I don't see the, what you can do, I guess, from a management standpoint, maybe you put the foot down, but the rebellion, I don't know. So, that, but that's one of those things I point to. She's going to behoove the Leafs better this year. That uh, um, that the division's better wash matches for them to kind of push their foot off the gas. And, and, and that's that whole I'm talk, talking about that it's not going to be a close uh, this year than it was last year. So tough to say because that, that's a character thing where you can kind of go back and say, hey, this thing happened, and you know they kind of fought back against that. And performance in the playoffs, despite the end result, so maybe you can't really fault them too much. But then see, you've got to do something about it, and that's, that's the million-dollar question that we face today. Well, and obviously we saw what they did in the off-season. The big change being the you know, new goaltending tandem. Um, we, we know the goaltending wasn't great during the regular season in the playoffs. I would say that that was probably one of the least of their concerns, but going in, do you feel like what happened during that T Tampa Bay series, they were trying to take a measured approach with the roster. You know, a lot of people calling for certain players to be traded, certain things to be done, but really only thing that does get done is the goaltending changes. You bring in Cali Yarncroft. And then things are kind of still the same. Like, how how do you view what you know, kind of the lease mentality and what they went through during the off season? Yeah, I think that they they kind of want, wanted to run it back and and make some tweaks and changes and add to their depth. And the Yarn Croak, they get someone who could be a little bit more more aggressive and give give them some depth six, and hopefully that. That's enough, but I Calgary either. I'm not saying that like playoff experience is a must or, or anything like that, but um, that they're willing to bank on again is pretty much the strategy. Once again, Bells like trying to replace the speed of an Ilya Mikheyev, who was really cashed in with the Vancouver Canucks, maybe more so than some might have thought. 
Uh, but yeah, they've got to kind of go run that back. In the goaltending, which I stand a little bit better than maybe the positional stuff, uh, is is a big reclam gamble that it it could stand to actually be the the daily talk season if it's not stabilized. So it, it's tough. It's we're kind of backed into a corner with their cap situation, with their core, with getting from their core players, and the strategy is kind of go at it work add some more depth and and hope that you can get it. A 115-point season is a 115-point season. Like, there's really a fault, a reason to not go back with that group in, 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 a, in a vacuum. So you have to look at it that way. But, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's where they, over the last five, five years, their regular season's up there with some some of the best. I, I didn't do the tabby in the top three or four over the last five years. But it's not the type of the way the game changes in the playoffs compared to the regular season. So it changes, but they have to hope for another Michael Bunting to, to spring out from some of these other cap gambles that they're trying to get and, and then figure out stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, it's it's tough. The goaltending, I think, is going to be the big, big wild card in this because how shaky and unstable it was, was to stabilizing towards to going with two question marks in goal. I don't know. It's it's going to be a big... Let's see how it works. And if it works, it's great. But then they bank on the fact that they've got more playoff experience that that's enough enough once they have that they'll go for do you think that this is kind of a make it or break it season for Kyle Dubas I know a lot of people of you know Leafs fans have been wanting some there's a sector of fans who have wanted him kind of gone and then there's a sector of fans who will defend him till their last breath like how do you view that situation I would have thought it was last year for all Canadians and when they started 04 and 2 or, or like they were like 3, 4 and 1 and then it was getting really bad in those losses before they sprung out a win against Chicago and came back and, and kind of righted the ship but at that point I thought some real tectonic shits here because the mood around the team was bad it was very um, yeah it was it was not looking good thought, okay, given what happened against Montreal, regardless of that season, this, this is this is the this is kind of, kind of where it's going to be and and make it or break year because you still have have another year with the same four core players. It's not until the following year that you've got the William Nealand's contracts coming up, right? So maybe it's maybe want to have someone else in place that's different when that contract expires extension. So, so that's that's going to be a really think it could be this year, but I thought it was last year too. Like, like I it was all the all the sign happened that after Montreal being so bad that that anything less than been deemed as unacceptable from the management staff and it, it the, the narrative changed so they got the optimal op- opponent and played as good as they could play without getting left them I'm kind of wondering I don't know what do we do and the the, the solution back and so I think the decks have been reset that, which is why you see so little that they kind of expire right when the other uh, four play, uh, players run out. And um, that could be Kyle Dubas, but it might not be. Yeah, I don't know if it's a make or break because I, I think that the, 
the the indications were that as long as Brendan's team continues to perform well in the regular season, that there is no need or, or do anything about it, especially with fan, fan outrage not being as high as, as I thought it was going to end it. The younger fan base, the Leaf fans, seem to be okay with the result, despite that there really isn't this witch hunt to kind of make or, or, or any sort of fist some changes at that, that management level that it's hard to say at this point if this is a make it or so uh, my final one here too, just kind of end off the show because everything in the NHL seems to be kind of quiet, right? We're here, we're waiting for, it feels like the big shoe to drop. I mean, we've seen some big signings with the Kadri signing. We see Vegas finally go out and make a trade for a goaltender that we were wondering what they were going to do there. But for the Leafs, there are a lot of question marks still left to be solved which one you know whether it's the rasmus sandine situation they're currently over the cap and need to figure that out what's the situation you're kind of keying on you're kind of eyeing with training camp not too far away you mean from a league-wide standpoint or for we'll, we'll stick with the leafs if you want to even do okay. a league-wide one that's fine as well but i think the Leafs will stick. sure i mean right now is rasmus sandine but i'm not as concerned about that one one is a lot of other reporters kind of seem to be about about it because what I've learned over the last of uh, and, and really analyzing the salary cap with a fine tooth comb is that the time is on the leaf side in the Rasmus Sandin situation and they really don't need till they get closer to the start of the regular season with the cap overage being what it is I mean um, trying to figure that, that element out and what we saw last year that easily happen in a first preseason game or in training camp that can automatically create a lot of space and to expect that the entire roster season games without a significant three week or more injury less likely than at least one half happening and so even though people are decrying sandine if they don't act quickly that could change so quickly ember that i'm not as concerned about that as maybe some other people seem to have space there um what I, what i am looking at from, from a league wide this was kind of percolating in my mind today because obviously Dallas has those um, big in Jason Robertson and Jay Gottinger still left to sign. And I have spaces for a lot, a lot of these teams, but if, if you're a CM that just has that you're flush full of cap space and you're looking to take care, take a team's cap issues, that might be the right time, time waiting until week before training camp uh, is over to really go into the days and the teams have already had their cap space situation that you might run into a situation where a team because of the summer cap moving to the regular season cap that if you can time it exactly in seven days out to a team that is squeezed that's the because at that point, then you have a team that's kind of figured out that they're not going to be like to move, you know, the chairs around the Titanic, realizing that they really can't and, and having no choice but to let the player go just because they can't. And I'm not saying this happened exactly, but do you remember when Montreal let Yes uh, in um, to Carolina? And that was a retribution move for the Sebastian. But what much what Carolina did was they waited until leave to do that. They waited until like late in the summer so that most cap situations were going to kind of be figured out. That Montreal was kind of not justified taking this and taking the assets instead of. Of taking a player, so I would look at full of cap space 
that are looking for a franchise player that they can sign to a long-term deal. I don't remember what Dallas's cap situation is, but, but if it's if it can guys and a team just goes right in, they can't do they can't do it with both the same. But if, if that happens where it's a week before and that season cap saw this suddenly becomes an eighty-two and a half million dollar cap at the income for the offer sheet, that's going to be very dicey. And I think that's the best time to try an offer sheet if you want to be successful. And that's Dallas Stars right now. Yeah, it is really going to be fascinating because I just feel like there's there's teams that are in a weird holding pattern, and it's like, um, it especially with Dallas. I mean, like you think they considering what Jake Ottinger did for you in the playoffs, you would want to get that done as soon as you can, and it just seems like if I'm a fan, it's it's very concerning because it's just where where does like how, like this was supposed to be, you know, a good push forward you know jason robertson has really stepped up too and it's like what what's what's going on here like and there's some that are you're seeing go ahead Sorry, i was was gonna say but that's a thing where it was late seasons that they were not accounting for as being a big expenditure on their cap and that's what's complicated things and dallas is a team that's been stung so they are of the minds of other teams that unless your absolute injury is going to be Patrick Waugh, it's really hard to commit that kind of money because of some of the other, you know, costs that could be associated that doing that. So that's what's happening there. Look, Dallas still didn't get past the first round. He got injured on their back and yeah, he was incredible for them. But is that, that enough to give guys maker money? I don't know. Like, I really don't know. I think he, he might be worse when he doesn't have the leverage. That's tricky. And if of that, maybe that, that's where you wait until Dallas has spoken in terms of their a little bit more that you know that Dallas is not going to be able to, to match there. But it's really tough. Um, and with the cap being squeezed the way it is, the offer sheets then a week before the regular season is about to begin. It's it's certainly going to be an interesting time, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, you're going to be all over it, especially from a lease perspective. Um, just uh, as we end here, uh, is there anything you would like to throw out there to the fans to know a little more? You know, where can they find your stuff? How How can they get involved with what you're doing? Yeah, this website is just si.com slash uh, NHL slash maple dash leaf, but it comes up in Google search. No big deal. Um, there's also that uh, I'm Dalter on Twitter. You can see that here if you're watching, but if you're listening, it's D A T E R. Um, and then keep an eye out for a couple of other product launches that are coming up, uh, particularly as, as well the newsletter because uh, the newsletter is going to be tied to a discord about to just give fans another level to be with me for the ride for no one else has done which was all 82 games and that's going to be a fun endeavor and um yeah grateful to the readership that has helped support allowing me to continue doing this well, we look forward to uh, having you on again and, uh, and and showing your work. I'll make sure that the links are also available in the show description so you can follow all that stuff there. So thank you, David, and uh, look forward to uh, what should be a, hopefully an, an interesting season for the Leafs. I appreciate it. All right, and that'll do it for us on the podcast today. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked on Leafs podcast on all podca- on podcasting platforms. And also, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. We're pushing to try to get to 2,000. We're we're getting there. We're slowly, slowly getting there. But I feel like with the Leafs almost at training camp, we'll, we should get there. Uh, make sure you follow the show at Locked On Leafs on Twitter and myself on Twitter at the underscore Morsudi. 
I'll also throw Mike, even though he's on vacation, I'll throw his Twitter out there as well. at Mickey underscore Canuck. Uh, we'll be back again uh, this week. I have a couple of ideas to get fans a little more involved in the show. So please stay tuned for that. And until next time, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.